Welcome back, my dirty denizens. Today we're doing something a little different. I don't want to limit myself strictly to the fields of microbiology, bacteria, fungi, viruses, all the lot. Instead, I'd like to be a bit of a, a paragon of general knowledge here, where we can explore all sorts of fun, wacky, interesting things on this channel. And of course, the shorts with all how dirty everything is will of course always be coming, so don't worry about that. But on the topic of things that are a bit more interesting, take today's video for example, where we will be exploring the obscure species iceberg. This chart was made by user TheoJ on icebergcharts.com. The link for credit will be in the description below. If you find yourself learning anything even remotely interesting at all, please feel free to drop a like, pick up a subscribe, and leave a comment to flex your knowledge on all the other plebeians. And of course, thank you for watching. Obscure animals. Our world is teeming with all sorts of strange and interesting creatures. Many of these were once thought of as myth until they were observed in the wild. Some thought long dead until they were found by accident. There's animals we don't even know that exist out there, evading our attempts to document them. And no, I'm not talking about Bigfoot, but maybe I could touch on cryptids in a later video. What I'm talking about is animals that we do know exist, but aren't commonly known to the general public. If you're not sure what an iceberg chart is, it's simply a way of showing how common or uncommon something is known about in the general populace. The top of the iceberg contains common elements, and as you travel further down, they become more mysterious with each layer. Like an iceberg, the top is only the smallest portion, and what you don't see is what's really interesting. Today we'll be tackling the first two tiers of this iceberg, with the latter videos coming later when I get around to it. But now let's not waste time any more dillying about. Grab your scuba gear and let's dive on in. Everyone's favorite childhood protagonist. Yes, even though he may not look it, Arthur is indeed an aardvark. His earlier designs looked a bit more like an aardvark, but they did round him out a bit more as time went on. Unlike the titular character, aardvarks do not talk or go to school. At least, as far as we know. They're a burrowing mammal native to Africa. They resemble a pig in their body shape with an elongated snout that ends in a disc-like shape. They mainly eat ants and termites with the rare foray into fruit named the aardvark cucumber. They're pretty secretive animals, emerging at sunset to wreak havoc on the anthills that dot the southern two-thirds of Africa. Similar to the ant eater, they use a long, sticky tongue to snatch up ants and drag them through their colonies into its very cute mouth. They can also dig a yard's worth of tunnels in about five minutes, which admittedly is pretty impressive. A gemsbok is the largest antelope in the oryx genus of straight horned antelopes. They're found in southwest Africa, bounding about with their impressive antlers. They live in herds of 10 to 40 and are primarily grazers. In the 60s, New Mexico brought a few to New Mexico and introduced them to the ecosystem. Seeing as they are far too large for native predators to take down, their population is kept in check by regular hunting. Pretty neat that North America has its very own antelope. Ah, the official animal of Reddit. The narwhal is a pretty neat creature, despite being co-opted by the untouchables. They're a toothed whale, in similar vein to sperm whales and beluga whales. In fact, their trademarked tusk is actually a protruding canine tooth. I know, a whale with canine teeth? What is this world coming to? For a while, scientists weren't sure what function the tusk served. It was assumed it was a secondary sex characteristic, a literal mine is bigger situation. However, recent analysis shows that it's a hypersensitive sensory organ with millions of nerves communicating stimuli of the sea to the narwhal. It's essentially an extremely large and dope-looking nose. Scientists have also witnessed narwhals using their tusks to slap water to stun fish before they eat them. It's a versatile tooth, far more useful than ours. Another pseudo-anteater makes the list. Pangolins are found in parts of Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Besides being an annoying Dota opponent, they're pretty peaceful creatures. Just look at how polite they are. Simply precious. One might take note of its scales, which gives it the name Scaly Anteater. These scales are made up of keratin, the same protein that makes up hair or nails, and they're the only known mammal with this unique feature. 
The scales offer protection against predators where they curl up in a ball to protect themselves. They're pretty solitary, living in burrows or tree trunks, leaving at night for a meal of ants and termites. Unfortunately, pangolins are threatened by poachers for their scales, which are used in a variety of traditional medicines. Not sure about all of you, but when I hear the name wombat, it conjures up images of a great beast. Perhaps with large, powerful wings, enormous fangs, a true terror of the night. The reality is much better. Wombats are just the absolute cutest little things to ever exist. These delightful critters are native to Australia, giving it the rare ward of an Australian animal that isn't a hell spawn. They're burrowing marsupials, meaning they have a pouch like a kangaroo. This pouch is backwards facing, assuring the wombat doesn't cover its young in dirt while it digs. And a uh, odd fact is that their poop is cube shaped. Yes, they poop out Minecraft blocks. They use these fecal Legos to mark territory and attract mates. I wish it worked like that for people. That's the end of layer one. Now we must sink deeper into the iceberg down to tier two. Aside from an exclamation of frustration, the eye-eye is a long-fingered lemur native to Madagascar. They look rather disheveled, like they're waking up from a three-day bender and have no idea what happened. They use their freaky long finger to tap on trees to locate grubs, then they use their teeth to make a hole and use the digit of doom to drag the grub out for dinner. Eye-eyes are one of three animals known to use this foraging technique. Natives carry a superstition that eye-eyes are harbingers of doom and a bad omen. If they point at someone with their long middle finger, it's not seen as rude, rather as a sign that the person will die. The only way to prevent this is to kill the eye-eye. For reasons such as this, the eye-eye is a threatened species. This little marsupial is a bilby, but now known as Macrotus which, uh, I mean, obviously Bilby sounds a lot better. While it may look like a rabbit, it is certainly not. No hopping about merrily here. All right, well, maybe just a little bit. I'll allow it. Their ears are the most noticeable things about them. These ears can be 11 to 22 inches long, which frankly is enormous. And these ears radiate lots of heat and help the Bilby avoid predators. They don't drink water. They get all their moisture from their diet of insects, fungi, and small animals. Sadly, they're entering endangered status due to habitat loss inflicted by the ever-reliably destructive humans. A dugong is a marine animal native to the Indo-West Pacific Oceans, as well as the east coast of Africa. While it may look like a manatee, there are some slight differences, the most notable being the tail. A manatee tail is flat and wide, while a dugong is fluked, like a whale's tail. They feed mainly on seagrass and shallow coastal waters, giving it the name sea cow. Sadly, this adorable chubby cow has been hunted for millennia for its oil and meat. Hunting still continues to this day, pushing this animal into endangered territory. They have a slow reproductive rate as well, exacerbating the population issues. A strange name for a common enough looking animal. They may look like a weasel or a ferret, but there are small differences that only dorks care about to differentiate the species. Its tail is about a third of its body length and it has a very long neck. Leonardo da Vinci actually has painted a lady with a stope before. They have a long past with folklore throughout Europe. In Irish folklore, they were viewed as having families that held rituals for their dead. They were considered to be thieving tricksters, and their saliva was believed to be a poison. If one were to run into a stoat at the start of a journey, it was an omen of bad luck. Unless, of course, you greeted the stoat as a neighbor, whatever that means. The Comey people of the Earls viewed stoats as symbolic of beauty and desirable women, for some strange reason. I don't know, I don't really get the vibe of that when I'm looking at a stoat. Fennec foxes are just the darned cutest, aren't they? They're native to Saharan Africa and are well adapted to living in the desert. The color of their fur reflects the rays of the sun during the day and helps keep them warm on freezing desert nights. Their ears are absolutely stuffed full of fur, helping keep the sand out when they enter their burrows. 
Their paws are also extremely furry, keeping the sensitive pads safe from the scorching desert sands. They get most of their moisture from their food, which includes just about anything that can fit in their mouths, but they won't turn down a nice frosty glass of H2O if you offered them. Mmm, thank you. No, natively as Tanuki, this funny guy is more dog than raccoon, but honestly, who could tell the difference? They do the job of the American raccoon, just scuttling about in the woods doing all sorts of animal things. They have a prominent place in Japanese culture since ancient times. They're seen as jolly tricksters with the ability to shapeshift. This is balanced out by their gullible and absent-minded nature. Well, it sounds, sounds kind of a lot like me, honestly. If you find yourself in Japan, you might see a few of these tanuki statues with very pronounced uh, balls. Why, one might ask? Apparently, they represent financial luck. Actually, many parts of the statue represent differing luck and fortune. You'll often see them outside of small shops and businesses. The okapi is a peculiar looking animal. Naturally, it's also been known as the zebra giraffe due to the markings on its legs looking like an Oreo. I, I mean zebra. They are much more giraffe than zebra, however, being the only other member of the giraffidae family. They're native to the Congo and only became known to the Western world in the early 1900s. They're solitary animals coming together only to mate and giving birth to a single calf. While they are endangered, there have been serious efforts to keep the population up through protection and zoo breeding programs. Wow, two adorable marsupials in Australia. Maybe the land down under does have a few redeeming qualities. Like wombats, these little fellas bring a ray of sunshine to the land of doom. I'm not sure why it's this far down the list, seeing as a few years ago, taking selfies with these fellas was a super popular trend. This is due to their reckless lack of fear towards humans. Maybe they know just how cute they are. However, they have been known to bite people from time to time. You cheeky bugger you. Again, not sure why the red panda is on the second tier, or even on the list at all. I mean, look at these guys. They're native to the eastern Himalayas and southwest China. While it may be called panda, it's not related to the giant panda. They're more in line with raccoons, skunks, and weasels. However, like the panda, they do enjoy a spot of bamboo with their afternoon tea. They're threatened by poaching and deforestation, which is a crying shame because they are just the most precious creatures ever. The shoebill is a very tall and a uh, very scary looking bird native to tropical East Africa. Despite the intimidating glare, they are harmless to humans, at least as far as we know. They stand up to 60 inches, or 152 centimeters, with a wingspan of 7 foot 7 to 8 foot 6, 230 to 260 centimeters. What gives this animal its name is the very expensive sneakers it likes to buy. No, but look at just how fresh it could be. The large bill gives the shoe bill its name, and boy does it use it. When they're not as evilly hungry as pelicans, shoebills can feast on all sorts of larger prey. This includes fish, lizards, baby crocodiles, other waterfowl, and if it gets hungry enough, maybe our sun. Surely you are well aware of the African ostrich. Well, did you know it's not the only one? The Rhea is a distant cousin of the ostrich, but is native to South America. They are smaller than an ostrich, but larger than an emu. It's a small mercy that they aren't in Australia, as they no doubt would have wiped out all of humanity. Brief moment of silence for Australians' reputation killed in the emu war. Alright, that's enough. Their name comes from the Greek titan Rhea, likely meaning ground in ancient Greek. Makes sense, seeing as these birds are not going to be flying off into any sunsets. Locally, they're known as Nandugauzu. Probably messed that up. This translates to big spider, possibly alluding to how the rhea spreads its lower wings when it runs. Amazingly, there's also wild rhea in Germany of all places. They escaped from an exotic meat butcher and have done quite well in the German countryside. Good for them. Gosh darn it, another anteater. 
This one is native to South and Central America, and as one might imagine, they eat ants, termites, and whatever other unfortunate insect gets too close. They actually don't have any teeth. They have a strong gizzard they use to break down the insects they eat. They prefer to spend time in trees where they are much more mobile. On the ground, they have to walk awkwardly because their long claws might stab their widow feetsies. Funny fact, they have a very powerful musk excreted by anal glands used to mark territory. They'll be rubbing their butts on anything they claim to be theirs. Tapirs are chonky fellas that live in South Central America and Southeast Asia. While they may resemble a pig, they're more closely related to rhinos and horses. They spend lots of time in and around water. They cool off from the heat, avoid predators, and feed there. When they enter the water, they let themselves sink to the bottom like a porky anchor. Then they take a nautical stroll feeding on the vegetation. They live a simple, peaceful, perhaps even enviable life. That brings us to the end of the first two tiers of this iceberg. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know below if you hated it. Also let me know below. Uh, any feedback is appreciated. I'm getting used to these uh, longer form videos and Lord knows I need improvement. Indeed. But I'm hoping I can get the next two tiers up in the next few weeks. I'm extremely busy sadly but i'm going to try to follow a consistent upload schedule with these and uh once i'm done i'm going to compile them all into one large video so you don't need to watch each part individually you can sit down and binge the whole thing to your heart's content but until then i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching big kisses and hugs and goodbye